quietly, please. And the next item of business is members' business debate on motion 10145 in the name of Willie Rennie on East Newk first responders. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those who wish to speak to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Willie Rennie to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. I'm disappointed so many are leaving the gallery. They're going to miss the debate <laughs> of the year. Uh, and they've still got time to turn around if they wish uh, to hear this fantastic contribution I'm about to make. Um, as always, um, East Newk uh, First Responders <laughs> is an independent community resuscitation charity working to improve the survival chances of people who suffer life-threatening emergencies in the East Newk of Fife. They cover the beautiful fishing and coastal villages of Ely, St Monans, Pitt and Weem, Anstruther, Cellardyke, Crail, as well as the inland communities too. The heart of the area is a good 20 minutes from St Andrews and 30 minutes from Leaven, and that's where their nearest ambulance stations are. The charity is totally funded by public donation and they support their community with life-saving equipment, training, first aid cover at events and health awareness. And I want to pay tribute to the work that they do for their community. They deserve the recognition from this parliament. They work with the Scottish Ambulance Service to respond to life-threatening emergencies to provide care until the ambulance arrives. They form a vital link in the chain of survival and increase the survival chances, especially for people with heart attacks and cardiac arrests. They have also equipped every community in the area with a public access defibrillator. It is a feature of the East Nuke to see the flashing white light on green boxes fixed to the side of public buildings. And they're running school lifesaver projects too. But East Nuke first responders want to do more to save more lives. For some time, they've been finding it difficult to access training for volunteers to add to the network. The Scottish Ambulance Service insists that they should conduct all the training, but have not provided sufficient and local training opportunities on a frequent enough basis. It seems that volunteers are giving up because they are required to wait for so long, or it is not feasible for them to access the training that is available. So that's my first request, that the Scottish Ambulance Service provide more training in a range of areas across the country on a more frequent basis or they should change their model. That brings me on to the use of new technologies. Operating internationally, Good Sam is short for Good Smartphone Activated Medics and is the world's most advanced emergency alerting and dispatching platform. The phone app allows alerters to dial the emergency services and at the same time notify nearby medically qualified responders of a medical emergency. Good Sam connects those in need with those who have the skills to provide critical help before the emergency services arrive. It offers real-time encrypted on-scene footage. It's quite an amazing piece of technology. You can book off and on. But also there's 30,000 volunteers worldwide that are accessing this network. And in the UK, there's 8,000 responders in this country alone. It has been used successfully in London, East Midlands, and the Northwest of England, with many lives having been saved. By the end of this year, the majority of ambulance services in England will have access and will be partnered with GoodSAM. It is endorsed by the Resuscitation Council and has been funded by Nesta, the Innovation Foundation. Appropriately trained volunteers can register with the app by submitting their qualification for approval. The qualifications they not have been gained through the ambulance service and can be qualified through other professional bodies too. This means that each community has access to a large number of first responding volunteers at the press of a button. Whilst we are only apparently three foot from a spider, you are probably no more than 200 metres from a doctor, a nurse or a paramedic. The Good Sam app connects you with that health professional if you are in trouble. A patient suffering a cardiac arrest is 10% less likely to survive with 
every minute that passes without CPR. Good Sam is a not-for-profit co-founded by Professor Mark Wilson, a neurosurgeon and an air ambulance doctor. There are similar apps in the United States of America called PulsePoint and in Sweden called SMS Lifesavers. But Good Sam has been developed with the UK ambulance partners and is already being used across the United Kingdom. A randomised control trial found the app in Sweden increased bystander CPR from 48% to 62%, but it didn't increase the survival rate. So the operators in Sweden have rolled out defibs and connected them to the app to increase the survival rate. Now in Sweden, many patients receive the first defib shock within five minutes of, with a survival rate of 70%. It's quite a remarkable change. Good Sam are expanding that e AED network in the UK and have mapped and verified what is by far the UK's and world's largest AED registry. East Nuke first responders are already embracing the new technology, but only in a limited way. It's because the Scottish Ambulance Service have not adopted it. They are considering it, but they have been considering it for some time. The cost is free to responders, and it's just £15,000 a year for the ambulance service. We've never had an ambulance on every street corner, or we ever will have that. But we can have a lifesaver on every corner for next to nothing. The benefits, I think, are clear. The potential is great. The cost is low, and life saved could be high. So I would urge the Scottish Ambulance Service to swiftly embrace the technology so we can access that wide network of experienced health professionals in every community. With more training and the adoption of new technology, we could save more lives. Thank you. We move to the open debate, and I call Liz Smith to be followed by Claire Baker. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I thank uh, Willie Rennie for securing this debating time to acknowledge what is hugely significant work in East Nuke. Indeed, I think I'd like to pay tribute to all first responders right across the country, some of whom I have seen at first hand and probably saving the life of a former colleague. The invaluable work that ENFR carries out in partnership with the Scottish Ambulance Service is simply first class, as is the speed at which they arrive on the scene of an incident delivering life-saving treatment before the arrival of the ambulance. This is particularly important in rural areas such as the East Nook, where it can often be very difficult for an ambulance to get there very quickly. They form a vital link in the chain of survival, which is well proven to dramatically increase a casualty's chances of survival from a heart attack or a cardiac arrest in particular. And that is important because we know that there are around 3,500 out-of-hospital cardiac arrests each year in Scotland, where there is sadly a very low survival rate of only 8%. The sooner the effective CPR is started, the better the chance of survival, and for every minute's delay, the patient's chance of life uh, dropping by 10%. If the first shock from a defibrillator is delivered within three to five minutes, the reported survival rates can soar to 74%, as Willie Rennie said. As the motion notes, the ENFR has also done invaluable work in installing life-saving defibrillators in 24 locations across the East Nook. That is also something about which my colleague Miles Briggs has been a very passionate campaigner for in Lothian, working in conjunction with the Jamie Skinner Foundation. That foundation was named after a talented young footballer whose life was tragically cut very short by a sudden cardiac arrest while he was playing for Tynecastle Football Club. His friends and family have asked many times whether his life could have been saved if a nearby defibrillator had been used. Willie Rennie has spoken much about the Good Sam app system, and I couldn't agree with him more about the importance of that. Emergency services staff and members of the public with basic life support skills in this area are being encouraged to sign up as volunteers, but I do note the request that Willie Rennie has made in the need to ensure that there is better support for these volunteers. And I'd certainly uh, encourage my constituents to take part if they can. I know that the organisation is strongly supported in the local community, relying as it does on the charitable donations and on these essential volunteers. Most recently, a large number of people undertook the East Nook Duke to raise money for ENFR, plunging into Anstruther Harbour in freezing temperatures on New Year's Day. I was not there, 
but I certainly uh, can give them all my support from on the beach. And I'd just like at this point to mention other similar and equally commendable organisation in terms of Scottish Mountain Rescue, who are also providing emergency first aid in areas inaccessible to the ambulance service in other parts of Mid-Scotland and Fife, and of course, right across the country. And so do the Scottish Charity Air Ambulance, which I'm proud to say uh, shares my constituency association office building, and we see and hear a lot about what happens there. So can I commend all of those who are involved with East Nuke First Responders for giving up their time and quite literally providing a life service. Now members will know that Willie Renner, Rennie is a harrier and that he will soon be taking part in the 116.5 mile round run around Fife's coastal path. We wish him well and we hope he does not trouble the East Nuke First Responders on that particular occasion. <laughs> Call Claire Baker to be followed by Tom Arthur. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer, and I'd also like to thank Willie Rennie for bringing this member's debate to the Chamber. As a Fifer, I know the East Nuke area well, and I would like to extend my thanks to all the members of the East Nuke first responders for everything that they do. I have spoken in many members' debates since I was first elected, including praising the work of local charities and community organisations, especially those from my region of Miss Scotland and Fife. We speak a lot about the problems facing our communities and our services in this chamber during regular business, but these members' debates often give us the opportunity to talk about the positive and the great work taking place on the ground. We should all be proud of the work that the East Nuke first responders are doing and the lives that they can touch and change. When it comes to the East Nuke first responders, it is no exaggeration that we can say they are truly lifesavers. We all know in this chamber the battle we have had with tackling heart disease in this country. Statistics published just last week from ISD Scotland highlight that over the last 10 years, the mortality rate from coronary heart disease in Scotland fell by 39.6%. And whilst we will all welcome this, heart disease is still a leading cause of death in Scotland, and there is much work to be done, especially in tackling the gap between rich and poor in this country and amongst males. But these statistics show that we are moving in the right direction. For an individual admitted to hospital with their first heart attack, their chances of surviving at least 30 days has increased from 86% to almost 93%. Amongst those aged 75 and over, this has increased from 71% to 85%. This rise is not a coincidence. It is due to awareness raising about the triggers of heart attacks and the early warning signs of an oncoming attack. And it is due to the hard work of our health professionals. But it is also due to the vital difference that early intervention can make. In these cases, the use of CPR and defibrillators can make all the difference. On last year's European Restart a Heart Day, the Scottish Ambulance Service released figures that shows that more Scots are being resuscitated following a cardiac arrest. Our ambulance services and paramedics do a great job in treating heart attack victims and patients who are experiencing life-threatening emergencies. But often the most crucial time can be the time in between the attack and the emergency services getting there. And this can present a unique challenge in more rural areas. This is where the first responders can step in. Seeing someone you know and love or even a complete stranger suffer an attack and being first on the scene can be a scary moment. The ability to react to that can be the difference to whether that person can survive or not. The East Nuke first responders are able to work to improve the survival rates of people who suffer life-threatening emergencies in the area and are all resourced from public donations. It's something that everyone in the East Nuke can and should be rightly proud of. That the first responders are able to work in partnership with the Scottish Ambulance Service is important. And Willie Rennie made good points about the benefits of the Scottish Ambulance Service being prepared to invest more into training and into new technology. The Good Sam Medical Dispatching app provides this life-saving care as an innovative solution that is a vital link in the chain of survival. We should all be commended, sorry, we should commend all those involved in setting up this initiative and welcome the positive working relationships that are developing. Presiding officer, these volunteers aren't just content with saving lives themselves, but are committed to working with others in the local community to ensure that they too are equipped with the skills, and in the case of public access defibrillators, the equipment to help others. Their school's CPR Lifesaver project is building a whole new generation of lifesavers and perhaps a whole new generation of first responder volunteers. 
that this is to be rolled out to every primary school in East Newark is no mean feat. And as mentioned, the project goes beyond just training children, it also actively encourages them to take their new skills and pass them on to family members and friends. Curtin of Largo school pupils trained an extra 66 people, Collinsborough another 79 and Anstruther an extra 105 people. With a success rate like this, East Newt must be one of the leading areas in Scotland for trained lifesavers per head of population. For that and for all the work that the East Newt first responders do, I, my constituents, would like to thank them dearly for all the work that they have done. Thank you. Call Tom Arthur to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. I wish to begin by congratulating Willie Rennie on securing this debate and thanking him for providing this opportunity to allow members to highlight the fantastic contributions made by community first responders in East Newark and indeed across Scotland. Uh, my own constituency of Renfrewshire South is home to the Neilston and Uplamoor first responders and I am delighted to welcome representatives Lewis McCall, Ryan Ledgerwood and Jim Wilson to the public gallery today. Um, as you can imagine, I'm going to focus a wee bit more on uh, Nielsen and up the more first responders in our wood and East Newt. But, uh, and I would say this is not the first time presiding officer that Nielsen and up the more first responders have been recognised in the Scottish Parliament. Um, in October of 2014, my constituency neighbour, uh, Jackson Carlog, in his uh, previous role as West Scotland Regional Member, led a members' debate congratulating the community first responders on dealing with their 100th emergency call since becoming operational. Within two years, that number had, passed seven, uh, had surpassed 700, and I imagine now it must be somewhere over 1,000. Presiding officer, um, I would suggest this debate complements Joanne Lamont's recent members' debate in which, inter alia, we discussed out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and the importance of bystander CPR. Community first responders uh, can also clearly be important actors in the chain of survival. This was something recognised by my predecessor as MSP for Renfrewshire South, Hugh Henry, who in Mr Carlo's debate rightly stated that community first responders can complement the work of our excellent ambulance service and can make a difference by saving lives. The value of community first responders is clear to all of us here, and we owe a debt of gratitude to the volunteers who provide this valuable service. We however, must also recognise the great leadership that ena enables these community first responders to operate. And Stuart McClellan and Ross Nelson, Nielsen and Upland Moor first responders have two outstanding leaders who have demonstrated vision and skill in taking an idea and transforming it into an organisation that is delivering frontline medical care to communities right across my Renfrewshire South constituency, including in Barhead, Johnston, Linwood and Lochwinnoch, not to mention um, as well communities in Ayrshire um, and Eastwood. This success has been made possible thanks not only to the hard work of Stuart, Ross and the many volunteers, but also due to the generosity of organisations like St John's Scotland who have donated thousands of pounds, Arnold Clark, Man and Rental, who provided two brand new 4x4 vehicles which proved particularly useful during the winter months. The award-winning Upland Humour Hotel has helped as well, who are providing um, accommodation for meetings. And there have also been contributions from individuals such as local historian Gina Henderson, who donated £5,000 from the proceeds of her book, Recollections of Neilston. Real sense of a community coming together to support a great local organisation. But however, as, as, as invaluable and as appreciated as these contributions have been, presiding officer, there is a need to consider how we secure the financial future for all of Scotland's community first responders. I'm looking forward to shortly meeting again with Stuart and Ross, and this is an area we will discuss. One suggestion which they have um, previously highlighted and have highlighted again to me recently is the potential for setting up a, a national charity dedicated to community first responders, similar to the Royal National Lifeboat Institution or St Andrews First Aid. This is something that I'm keen to explore and would welcome the opportunity to engage with other members in this. In concluding, presiding officer, let me again thank Willie Rennie for bringing us to the chamber and reiterate my support and gratitude to community first responders in Nielsen and Up the Moor, East Newark and right across the whole of Scotland. Uh, the final contribution in the open debate is Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to take part in this debate today and congratulate Willie Rennie for bringing it to the Chamber. We as politicians do all we hope to help individuals, and that's maybe the reason we come into uh, this occupation, about individuals who give of their time and their talent uh, to help 
others uh, are, are even more uh, 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 of, um, of my uh, understanding and support. Uh, so individuals who give that uh, uh, and, 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 and do that is, is tremendous. Uh, the assistance can be given by individuals, uh, as I said, is very good. The, this includes the, the introduction of the, the, the responders that we're going to talk about today and the professionalism that they deal with uh, to ensure that the help is provided before medical assistance uh, arrives. So we've heard this afternoon about the East Nuke responders uh, and they are independent uh, and, and a community organisation charity which works to improve the survival and outcomes of people who suffer life-threatening emergencies in the East Nuke area. The East Nuke area, we've already heard, is a beautiful part uh, of Scotland uh, and covers large uh, little towns, villages and parts of the, uh, the community that are, are recognised the world over. Uh, today, uh, they, you know, they are funded uh, by donations that are given to the group uh, and they, they, their support uh, to, to, to ensure that communities have life-saving equipment, community training, first aid cover events, health awareness and a myriad of other organisations and other roles that they want to be part of. Uh, this carries out their partnership working uh, alongside the Scottish Ambulance Service and that uh, is a, a, a great thing to see. And also we've talked about the Good Sam mobile app today already. Now that is real technology helping individuals uh, to ensure that we are uh, life-saving. The app helps provide care in life-threatening emergencies until the ambulance service arrives. Each volunteer uh, responds with the equipment of life-saving and that includes the uh, uh, defibrillators that we've talked about already today. Uh, the personal defibrillator by the Scottish Ambulance Service is a life, uh, you know, they, they, are, they are really saving lives on a, on a regular basis and, and we're dealing with these Category A calls uh, that are given to these responders. Uh, the community first responder arrives on the scene first and can deliver life-saving treatment before the arrival of the backup of the ambulance and other individuals to support them. They, they form a vital link in the chain of survival, which is well proven to demonstrate that casualties can survive even more uh, if they've given that information uh, and they're given that support uh, for cardiac arrest or for a heart attack situation. Uh, the chain of survival is essential, but little known about outside the medical world. Uh, and there are four procedures that come into this. Uh, the early recognition to call for help, there's early CPR, which buys some time. Uh, there's the uh, early defibrillation to restart the heart. Uh, and there's also uh, the post care uh, to restore the quality of life for the individual. All equipment and costs running in the, uh, are supported by the charitable donations. And that in itself, Jeff Trevangio, is an organisation that, that is doing so well in the community and being uh, donated uh, by individuals and organisations. Uh, so over uh, the time that the group has been formed since 2009, they've attended over a thousand Category A life-threatening 999s, covered local first aid events, delivered training in essential health care, and installed over 40 public access disabilities across the area. It is the, the SEN Deputy Providing Officer that the work of the East Nuke First Responders is recognised by a far wider audience, and that's essential life-saving for the communities that they represent in the area, which is miles away from the nearest hospital and retained, uh, and that opportunity is there. I commend the work of the volunteers, and I wish them continued success in all they do to maintain, sustain life in the community that they represent. Thank you. I call Eileen Campbell to respond to this debate. Around seven minutes, please, Minister. <clears throat> Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I want to also add my thanks to Billy Rennie for giving us uh, all this opportunity to recognise the fantastic contribution that all staff and volunteers involved with the East Nuke first responders make to saving lives in that incredibly beautiful part of uh, Fife. And it is a beautiful part of the world, as Alexander Stewart and others have recognised. I certainly know it from family holidays myself, but it is a rural part of the country and it's not without its uh, challenges. And that's why it was important that Willie Rennie took the opportunity to, to describe that hugely, that huge amount of collaborative work that is going on in the new East Nuke uh, first responders uh, group and the work that they have undertaken that voluntarily they have driven, uh, have been driven and motivated to protect and keep safe their community. And I'm certainly glad that I've got the opportunity to record my thanks for that complete dedication that they have. We also similarly value the important role carried out by all the 132 community first responder schemes across Scotland and I'm delighted again to have the opportunity to recognise their contribution in Parliament. Those that volunteer in a community first responder scheme are trained in a wide range of emergency skills, learning to use specialist equipment such as automatic external defibrillators and oxygen therapy to provide an early intervention in situations such as a heart attack or breathing problems before the ambulance crew arrives and by delivering these life-saving procedures are helping in patient survival and recovery. 
They also support their local communities by providing training, ensuring that more and more people have these invaluable life-saving skills. But I will absolutely uh, reflect on the points raised by Willie Rennie regarding training of volunteers and the potential capacity issue that he described around regarding that training. Volunteers are phenomenal. They're a phenomenal resource and we we'll certainly don't want to see uh, un anybody unnecessarily being put off from being part of this important uh, chain of survival. At present, there are, as I've said, 132 community first responder schemes providing 894 active volunteers throughout Scotland being supported by the Scottish Ambulance Service. And although this is something we as a society can be proud of, I believe there's always the opportunity for the expansion and introduction of more community first responder schemes. I would therefore like to take the opportunity today to encourage communities across Scotland to follow the, follow the lead of the East Nuke first responders and other established uh, schemes by engaging with the Scottish Ambulance Service to set up a first responder scheme in their own local area. Because the underlying principle and ethos behind first responders in Scotland is to equip the community with the skills which can and do save lives. Community first responder schemes are about developing greater resilience in our communities. And we know that survival from a medical emergency such as a cardiac arrest depends on the chain of survival, that being the recognition of that it is a cardiac arrest and that CPR and defibrillation swiftly follows. It is by rapid bystander intervention at incidents such as cardiac arrest where the greatest gains in survival will be achieved. Starting CPR and calling 999 and buys crucial minutes until medical help arrives. And the Scottish Ambulance Service advises, Willie Rennie and others have des described, that for every minute that passes without defibrillation, chances of survival decrease by 14%. And research also shows that applying a controlled shock within five minutes of collapse provides the best possible chance of survival. And the Scottish Government out of hospital cardiac arrest strategy has two key aims. And that is by 2020, we intend to equip an additional 500,000 people in Scotland with cardiopulmonary resuscitation skills and increase survival rates from out of hospital cardiac arrest, saving an additional 1,000 lives. Another part of our out of hospital cardiac arrest strategy involves the mapping of static defibrillators. And this will allow uh, ambulance control centres to identify and utilise publicly accessible defibrillators registered on the Scottish Ambulance Service computer-aided dispatch system. And this information will be built into the ambulance control centres so that when they receive a 999 call for a cardiac arrest, the ambulance control centre will be able to signpost the caller to the nearest defibrillator. That knowledge improves the chain of survival and helps increase the likelihood of survival. And as of the 16th of November last year, the Scottish Ambulance Service has registered 1,553 public access defibrillators on their command and control system and with this number expected to grow. And there are also a number of other initiatives going on throughout the country that further support our first responders and help make the community far more resilient. So as well as ensuring that we have public access defibrillators in a range of locations supported by local training and awareness raising and a Save a Life for Scotland has been working with Education Scotland to, in, to develop resources to support schools who wish to access CPR training. Um, Willie Rennie though and others specifically and legitimately raised the opportunities though that are presented to improving out of hospital cardiac arrest survival rates through innovation and new technology. And a specialist subgroup of Scotland's cardiac arrest strategy delivery group, including uh, SAS, uh, British Heart Foundation, the government and Edinburgh University are currently looking at a strategy for PAD utilisation in Scotland. As part of this, the subgroup is examining the potential role of apps, assessing whether and how apps would fit into the service, such as the Good Sam that is mentioned within the motion today. Uh, similarly, before I conclude, I wanted to uh, say, uh, recognise the comments of Liz Smith, who also paid correct tribute to the Jamie Skinner Foundation for the awareness raising the work that they do. And she also paid tribute to the Mountain Rescue for the selfless work and effort they do to keep people safe on our mountains and to enjoy Scotland's great outdoors safely. And I also agree with the tribute that she made to the Air Ambulance Service, which is at Perth Airport, which is actually really closer to the village of Bulbeggy, which is near where I grew up, and certainly an, an, a, a facility that I know well. And their efforts were very recently recognised in the recent Daily Record and NHS Scotland Health Awards, and rightly so for the phenomenal work that they do to keep people safe across Scotland. 
I wanted also to uh, recognise the comments made by Tom Arthur about that long-term financial sus sustainability that is so important to help uh, keep people who are volunteering uh, involved in this important work. And I'm happy to listen and engage with him on those suggestions as they develop. Similarly, uh, Claire Baker talked correctly and rightly about the inequalities, about how we need to do more preventative work to stop poor health happening uh, in the first place, and recognising that this requires work to address inequalities across a whole range of fronts, whether that's social security, housing, education and employability, not just health, but certainly if we do those works up, uh, that work upstream, that would help p uh, prevent people from having poor health uh, in the first place. And it's right that we link that preventative agenda into today's debate. So finally, uh, Presiding Officer, I'm delighted to have been part of this debate to recognise the role that all of our community first responders have in helping to save lives, including those in the East Nuka Five. These people, these volunteers right across the whole of Scotland, deserve our congratulations and our recognition. And I sincerely thank Willie Rennie for the opportunity today to do so. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I suspend the meeting until half past two. <laughs>